Hi everyone, welcome back. Hope all of you are following COVID guidelines, getting vaccinated and taking care of yourself and your family. These are unprecedented and tough times for all of us. But like always, I strongly believe that mankind will win this fight together. Today I want to talk about a topic that is important for both a manager and an employee. Does being promoted to a management or a leadership position means more stress coming into your life? Are you not interested in becoming a manager or a leader just because you think that uh, a management or a leadership role will only bring more work into your life, thereby disrupting your work-life balance, uh, putting you under tremendous stress and over a long period of time will hamper your health? Let's find out the truth. I've been managing people for over 14 years, but my experience, my personal experience before 2011 and 12 and after 2011 and 12 has been radically different. I remember when I was uh, an individual contributor uh, during the year 2006 and 2007, um, I remember my age cohorts and my colleagues wanted to become managers and leaders. Uh, people wanted to get out of the individual contributor uh, role as quickly as possible. Uh, because management and leadership profiles uh, was a coveted profile at that time. I remember there used to be parties and celebration when somebody used to come out of an individual contributor role and get promoted to a management position. Uh, when I became uh, the team lead for the first time in, in the year 2008, I remember I saw the same aspiration uh, in the eyes of my reportees. However, post-2011 and 12, my experience uh, you know, was changing. I was slowly feeling that the mid-level workers and even a lot of frontline workers are not inspired to become managers and leaders uh, so much. Uh, rather, I felt a strong disinterest among employees not to become managers and leaders. Uh, people wanted all those bonuses, all those uh, you know great salary, perks and benefits that a management or a lead leadership profile uh, brings in. but they wanted all those things without becoming uh, a manager and a leader. People not wanting to be managers and leaders, for me, it's a big, big problem. Now, you can ask me, Bishwadeep, why it's a big problem? Because any which ways we are moving towards a skill-focused century, right? So why managers and leaders uh, is such a big deal? Well, it's such a big deal because uh, managers and leaders provides you direction and vision. And with a lot of skills, but without direction, you cannot achieve anything. If you look at mankind's history, whatever we have achieved, we have achieved due to leadership, right? So people not wanting to be leaders, it's a big, big problem for our future generation. So I wanted to get to the bottom of this and find out the truth. In 2014, a survey conducted in USA by Career Builder, the online survey polled a nationwide sample of 3,625 full-time workers in government and private sector across salary levels, industries and company sizes. Of the thousands surveyed, only one-third of the workers, that is 34%, said they aspire to leadership positions, and just 7% strive for C-level management. This meant that 66% workforce were unwilling to become leaders. The reasons provided were many. Some said the long hours that the managers have to put in will hamper the work-life balance, while others spoke about more workload and stress associated with leadership role. Now, I had several interactions with a lot of managers and leaders, and trust me, all of them had pretty much similar experiences. I even met managers who even told me that they are struggling to uh, bring up their next line or identify their next line because most of their top performers in the team does not wish to become uh, a manager or a leader. So nobody aspires to take up a, a leadership profile. So the Career Builder Survey is not only happening in USA, it's basically a global reality and it's definitely a truth happening in the Eastern part of the world as well. As for me, there are two prominent reasons for this particular mindset. The first reason is skill-focused industry. Individual contributors can earn a fat paycheck these days without having to move up the corporate ladder as long as you have the latest skills. Companies are willing to pay more to skilled workforce these days. The trend might continue with the advent of high demand for new skills like AI, machine learning, data science, cloud and edge computing, big data, and etc. The second reason is stress. A perception among employees that the management or leadership role comes with more responsibility, long working hours, and hence more stress. 
stress has an adverse effect on health, so why risk our own lives? Now, for the first reason, there is absolutely no escape from the job market reality. Now, we are moving towards a skill-focused future. And I personally believe that uh, if you're absolutely passionate about your work, whether you're doing a surgery uh, or whether you are an engineer, you are in architecture, uh, whether you're in painting, sales, marketing, if you're absolutely passionate about what you're doing, then you should continue to do that work till your death, right? There, there, there's no doubt about it. However, we must remember that majority of the workforce does not work for passion, they work for a living. In 2017, when a Deloitte survey revealed that only 13% of the US workforce are passionate about their work. Now we are talking about 13% workforce of a developed country, which is economically the most powerful in the world, where we have more affluence in the society, are not working for their passion. It goes without saying that this number would be a minuscule factor in developing and even in underdeveloped countries. So if you are not passionate about a work which you are doing simply because it pays you well, you will not experience less stress. Chances are you have to force yourself to constantly update your knowledge and skills to keep up with the market value. And that drill will definitely be very, very stressful. Now for the second reason, we have to validate whether this perception that higher rank uh, brings in more stress in your life is correct or not. From a high level, it seems to be true. When you become a manager or a leader, it means more responsibility comes into your profile. Uh, it might mean you have to put in long hours of work. It might mean you have to stay away from your family at times. It might mean that you will do more work and uh, you might not earn that much money that sometimes an individual contributor or a highly skilled individual contributor can earn. All those things are very true. But the crux of the matter is, does all these hard work and long hours means more stress coming into your life? In order to find that out, I present to you the results of two prominent studies. One, the Whitehall study, and number two, the Stanford Harvard study. Let's take a look at the first study, the Whitehall study. There was a study conducted by a group of scientists in Britain to understand the relationship between stress and a person's place in the social corporate ladder. The study is named after the Whitehall area of London and originally led by Michael Mammoth. The first Whitehall study was conducted in 1967 for a period of 10 years. Sample size was around 18,000 men from British civil service aged from 20 to 64 years. The results were both surprising and revealing. It concluded that the people of lower ranks are more likely to die prematurely than the people of higher ranks. The second Whitehall study was conducted from 1985 to 1988 and examined the health of over 10,000 civil servants aged from 35 to 55, of whom two-thirds were men and one-third were women. The second Whitehall study was conducted to follow up and understand the reason of the results of the first Whitehall study itself. Let's take a look at the graph here. Have a look at the vertical axis. The value 1 denotes the average death rate of the whole of British civil service population. The blue bar represents the admin jobs. We can think of them as leadership profiles. The maroon bars represent the professor and the executive jobs. We can think of them as the management roles. The rest of it, which is the green and the grey bars, represents the individual contributor level jobs. Then they have given the results in different age groups. Although all the age groups gives the same result, however, our interest lies in the age group of 40 to 64 years since that's where the mortality problem mainly starts. As you can see, the death rate of admins and the executive roles are way below than that of the lower ranked employees. Moreover, there is almost a four-fold difference between the bottom and the top grade. The study revealed that the level of stress hormone cortisol is higher in the lower ranked employees than higher ranked administrators and leaders. As we know, the higher and the longer duration of cortisol in our body causes a lot of health issues like spike in glucose level, blood pressure, heart diseases, diabetes, anxiety and short temper, cognitive ability impairment, etc. And all of these has its impact in our social relationship as well. The study revealed that stress is being caused by a combination of high work demand and low job control. Let me explain that. 
In today's world, whether you are an individual contributor or a manager or a leader, high demand in your work life is very common. A manager or a leader might at times face more challenges, uh, get more work, have to take more responsibilities and put in long hours. However, since they are in leadership position, their sense of being in charge or being in control is much much more than anyone down the ladder. They feel that they have more autonomy than the rest to make certain decisions. This feeling of being in control reduces cortisol and hence stress. For lower ranked employees or individual contributors, the sense of being in control in terms of autonomy or let's say job security is much much less or not there at all in certain cases. So high work demand generates more cortisol in them and hence explains the high mortality rate in individual contributors. Let's take a look at this graph. The data in this graph was taken from a self-reported job control and its related coronary heart disease incidence which we will term as CHD. So the graph compares the incidence of CHD in three groups of people. The first group who feels they have high job control, the second group who feels they have intermediate job control and the third group who feels they have low job control at work. The average incidence of CHD for the high job control group is taken as one. As you can clearly see here that the people who feels intermediate or low job control had over twice the incidence of CHD compared to those with high job control feeling. Now let's take a look at the second study, the Stanford Harvard study. In 2012, a report published by Stanford on a similar study conducted by Stanford psychology professor James Gross and a professor of public policy and management at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, Jennifer Lerner, suggest that leadership positions are in fact associated with lower levels of stress. Stanford even went on to investigate the same results in baboons. Stanford biology professor Robert Sapolsky's measurements of the stress hormone cortisol in baboons showed lower levels of hormone in higher ranking troop members. The critical element seems to be the sense of control once again. The connection between power and tranquility was dependent on the total number of subordinates a leader had and on the degree of authority or autonomy a job conferred. Announcing the results, Max McClure of Stanford News Service wrote that, it seems that feeling of being in charge of one's own life more than makes up for the greater amount of responsibility in higher positions. What's my take on this? Well, it definitely busts the myth that existed uh, in the mindset of individual contributors that management and leadership profiles uh, brings in more stress to your life and uh, hence it might not be so good for your health in the long run. It definitely busts that myth, definitely for sure. Uh, but I would also like to, you know, uh, look at this study from a leader or a manager's perspective and say this to myself that if I can give a sense of uh, autonomy or a sense of uh, job control uh, to my uh, reportees, an individual contributor, maybe I can lower their stress level and give them that uh, feeling of joy and fulfillment in their work. If you want to read the full article, you can go to my website lettuceclead.net or you can go to insysnet uh, where this article got published recently. I put both the links down below for you in the description so that you can visit there and have a read and enjoy it. Hope you have liked this video and uh, hope this has given you some revealing insights. Um, I'll see you next time. Till then, take care of yourself and goodbye.